This is an account of the experience of the Consolidated Edison Company of New York with the design, construction, and operation of one of the first nuclear power stations serving a large metropolitan area. The project was begun in 1955 when there were doubts concerning uranium availability and supply. And because thorium, a plentiful material, offered possibilities for obtaining a higher rate of conversion of fertile to fissionable material, it was decided to use thorium-232 as the reactor's fertile material combined with uranium-235 as the fissionable. The projected system demand on Indian Point Station was 275 megawatts. In 1955, this capacity could not be achieved in one reactor. So the final design called for reactor production of approximately 165 megawatts, with the remainder to be supplied by conventional superheaters. These superheaters provided additional capacity at low capital cost, plus a significant reduction in the turbine cycle heat rate. To achieve 165 megawatts, the average power density was set at 76 kilowatts per liter, the highest of any central station power reactor operating today, with a projected core life of 470 effective full power days. The high power density and use of thorium as fertile material about which there was then scant actual operational data, made necessary a series of critical experiments to confirm design calculations. These experiments were conducted at the Babcock and Wilcox nuclear facility in Virginia. Two particular problem areas were uncovered. One, the ratio of peak to average power in the core exceeded design value of 4.2 by about 25%. This was solved by incorporating variable U-235 concentrations within the fuel rods in each element and by zone loading. The uranium loading varies in each of three zones. Lowest in the center zone of the core increased in the next outer zone, greatest in the outside zone. This combination of zone loading and variable uranium concentration within each fuel element resulted in a ratio of peak to average power that satisfied design requirements. The second problem area had to do with the reactivity control capability of the 21 movable control rods, inadequate for the desired long core lifetime. This problem was solved by supplementing the movable control rods with boric acid in the moderator to hold down reactivity due to moderator temperature change. By adding approximately 225 parts per million of natural boron to the fuel element cladding to serve as burnable poison. And by installing 12 boron stainless steel fixed chim rods between the fuel elements. These fixed chim rods are removed at about half core lifetime. The Indian Point reactor is required to meet the same load changes as are imposed on conventional units. The coupling of superheaters with the reactor dictates that the steam pressure remains nearly constant at all times. This presented design problems in reactor and plant control. A special automatic control system was developed to meet these problems. 
This automatic system, unlike other nuclear power plant controls, utilizes signals from steam pressure and flow to adjust reactor power output to match generator load. The ability of the control system to follow rapid load changes eliminates need for manual adjustment by the operator. Knowledge of reactor and combined reactor conventional superheated transients was limited. Therefore, the system was designed for at least 9% per minute ramp changes and at least 18% step changes. Actual control and response of the system indicates that ramp changes of 15% per minute and step changes of almost 30% are possible. Approximately 50% above design specifications and exceeding most conventional plant capability. To summarize, the Indian Point Reactor, the first power reactor in the world utilizing thorium and enriched uranium, had through January 1964 generated 1,173,420 megawatt hours of electricity. and every indication is that the reactor has excess thermal capacity. Thus, the Indian Point experience has confirmed the use of thorium as a fertile material. And equally important is opening the door to refabrication of U-233 as a reactor fuel. Important, too, is that Indian Point after early problems, principally on the conventional side of the plant, is in commercial operation, achieving load factors comparable to Con Edison's conventional plants. Further, Indian Point's operating costs, like its load factor, are already almost equal to the average of the system's conventional plants. And it is expected that future operating costs will be among the lowest in the Con Edison system. In short, Indian Point is a long step forward in the practical application of peaceful use of nuclear power. Less than 35 miles from the heart of New York City.